Good evening, everybody. Kamatara, how are you? Or Hashem, thank you. Good evening, Bobby. All right, let's get started. Facebook. Okay. So uh, we're going to start with Bet. Uh, it says in Bet Yosef, the Shote Besevrai, we said in these two yesterday, that he should be drinking when he's reclining, the first cup and all the cups, right? Uh, the same thing. So it says in Bet Yosef, where is the source for that? Maskenat the Gemara, right? It's the conclusion of the Gemara, Beperk Arbe Psachim, over there in Kuv Chetam Bet, Amud Aleph. The Kul Hu Arba Kosot Bao Haseba. So it says there that all the four cups require reclining. Uh, and then he goes on, And then it says, right, if he didn't um, if he didn't uh, recline, we said in the tour, he has to drink again, right? This time with reclining. Where is that? Right, that's what it says in the Rosh, um, that you have to do it again. Okay, good. And then he has one more piece here. He says, And also another thing we said, which is that um, you don't bless, you don't make an after blessing when you drink this wine. Um, usually, right, uh, the rule is like this. If you drink wine or any other drink and you had a revi'it, which is three ounces, you know, you know, in one or two shots, quickly, uh, you have to make an after blessing as well. Allah give him. But here we don't. What's the reason why? So uh comes from Bet Yosef and tells you, Hu Ezri, right? This comes to exclude the Avi Ezri because he says that you should make an after blessing. He says that you should make an after blessing after the first cup. Like, like it says in the tour, in um and in this chapter, which is uh, 474. Okay, so uh, let's see Shulchan Aruch. So I wanted to tell you, right, what's the reason why we don't bless here, the after blessing? It's because we're going to have another cup uh, in a little while. Uh, we're going to do that uh, small Hallel there and say Ga'al Yisrael, and then we're gonna have to another. We have to have another cup. So if you're having another cup, what's the point of now making an after blessing? There's no point in that, right? Because uh, you're still gonna drink more. That's the reason why we don't do it. Uh, okay. So let's see Shulchanuch. So it says the uh, Shulchanuch, Shotet be'seba ve'no mevarechacharav. Right. First thing is you have to drink reclining. Number two, you don't make an after blessing. That's the story. Okay, good. Let's go on.
So it says here the two. Vehem ilze lishtot afilu kama kosot harashut biado. So he says that um, if you want to drink more here, right, more wine, you can if you want. Uh, so what does that mean? Besides the four cups that we drink, if you want to add more to that, you're allowed to. Uh, so that means you can do it now since you already made Kiddush. You can drink another one if you want. We're a little bit flimsy, you know, in this generation, you know, we can't hold the liquor so good. So if you're, if you're going to drink more than four, you're probably going to get into trouble. You're going to get like very, you know, queasy, maybe fall asleep, you know, whatever. So, you know, for us, it's like not so recommended to do that. But in those days, you know, I guess they used to hold their liquor very well so they could drink as much as they wanted or whatever. Uh, so that's the difference. Okay, so... Uh, So it says, Avi Ezri, yeah, you can drink more if you want, but he says, you know, do it in a way, you're, gonna, you're not going to have to make any extra blessings there. So why would you want to make extra blessings? Uh, so I guess what he means to say is that if you uh, drink more cups than the four that that is recommended here, right? That is obligation. So what's going to be is that um, you're going to get sidetracked, you know, into a different uh, kind of a situation where, you know, you're getting into a, some kind of a like a social kind of mode, right? So because of that, you may have to make more blessings because, um, you know, you got you got like distracted, you know, whatever. It could be that's that's the reason why. I'm not really sure. Let's see what the how Bez Yosef explains this. Okay, let's see what he says. So as we said, right, that we said you could drink more if you want to drink extra, you could. Uh, so um, he brings a source for this, right? Where is this Mishnah Pek Arve Psachim? Kufiut Zayin Amud Bed. In the Mishnah there, it says, "Bena Kosot Halalu Im Ratzal Ishtot Ishte." If you want to drink more between these cups, right? In between, you're allowed to. Ben Shlishi Levi, right? Lo Ishte. But if you want to do it between the third and fourth cup, there you're not allowed to add extra. Interesting. Uh, so he says it's possible to say that even between the first and the second you really shouldn't add more why not to get drunk right as we said right? uh, if you're not so strong uh, you're going to drink too much wine you're going to get drunk and you're going to get you know queasy and right uh, you know you're going to lose track you're going to lose the, your, your trend of, of, the, of the mitzvot and uh, you know get distracted so not really such a good idea, you know, for people who are not so strong to hold their liquor, to drink too much, especially in our times. Uh, so, yeah. Then he goes on. <clears throat> So he says this will prevent you from right uh, reading the Haggadah and doing the seder properly because you're gonna get drunk. Um that which he mentioned that you shouldn't drink between third and fourth cup. What's the reason why? But uh, and that didn't didn't say between first and second. Mishum demilta de la shikahi who so he says, So it says not really so common that a person drinks so much before he eats uh, before he eats a meal. Um, so he says, this rabbi says that 
you know, the wine that you drink before the meal doesn't really get you drunk. Uh, but he says, nevertheless, you should be careful, you know, not to drink too much. Unless you have a big need for that, whatever, right? Okay, good. So let's see Shulchan Ruch. That's Shulchan Ruch. Right, so it says if you want to drink extra, you're allowed to, as we said. But right? uh, what are we talking about between the first and second? But it says it's proper not to do that, even though it's allowed. Proper to refrain. Why is that? Unless you have a big need for that. Because if you get drunk, you won't be able to finish all the mitzvot, right? The agada, the seder, all the things that you have to do. You may fall asleep, you know, whatever, and uh, lose uh, lose your momentum there together. That's the reason why. Okay. That's Gimel. So yeah, now I'm understanding better uh, what we said in the tour. Um, it was a little bit vague for me, but now I'm getting the the, uh, the hang of it. So what we said was like this, right? That the Avi Ezri said that you have to, you know, make sure if you want to drink extra cups of wine, that uh, you should have your, you know, con you should be have intention for that concentration, concentrate on it. What does that mean? Concentration, intention. What does that mean? What does what does that have to do with this this issue? So what it means to say is like this: that um, you should intend to drink more when you drink your kiddush. Have the intention to drink more, because if you intend to stop, right? Uh, because you already drank a lot, you're gonna have to make another blessing, and that's what he's trying to say here, right? That you know, make sure you have the right intention. So you shouldn't have to make another blessing. One blessing should cover all the cups of wine that you drink. Uh, we're talking about before the meal, right? Because it doesn't cover the, the, what you drink after the meal. That's a different story. Okay, yeah, good. So uh, let's see but Yosef. First of all, I'm just going to read on a little bit. It says here, That's what it says, this rabbi also. Ah, so they asked him a question, right? Which is that when you're drinking wine on uh, the night of Pesach, are you allowed to make the blessing, right? which is usually made uh, for drinking like another type of wine, you know, you're drinking like another type. So you have to make a blessing for that in uh, in many cases. And so the question is, right, do we do that also on, on Passover as well? To make a blessing, because he's drinking a different type of wine. Like, you know, that would be, what would be the example? Right? Let's say, you know, you started off with the, uh, uh, you know, something, right? Let's say. It started off with the uh, Manischewitz, you know, and whatever, something like that, right? And all of a sudden, now you're upgrading yourself and you're going into some better quality stuff, you know, Merlot, right? So now you make a blessing because you, you're going upgrading to Merlot. 
and then you're going to go into Cabernet, right, and upgrade again, whatever, and do another blessing. By the way, Cabernet is, is not always an upgrade from Merlot, but <laughs> even if it's not, if it's even if it's like, you know, similar quality, you still, you know, do make that blessing for drinking a different type of wine. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here. That was a question that they asked him. So what did he answer? Uh, so he says, yes, they can. If they're drinking a different type of wine, right? They're whatever, going to a different different mode, right? Uh, so they do make that blessing. Because it doesn't really look like he's adding unless he makes another Borpia Giffen. But if he makes Tovem Tiv, which is, you know, made commonly because you're drinking another type of wine, that doesn't look, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't look any objectionable, you know, or suspicious or whatever. It looks very, you know, into the scheme of things, very ordinary, very routine, you know, so no problem with that. That's what he answers this rabbi. Uh, so he says, uh, Let's see, they're going according to their right custom, which is that they make a Burpia Giffen on every cup. So, what does that mean? As we said, right, the Ashkenazim, the custom by them is to bless on every cup. We Sfaradim, we only bless on the first and third. But the Ashkenazim, they bless on all four. So this question, is this context over here, is going according to the Ashkenazi custom. Okay. So he says, therefore, he'll kach mistaber le'u lememar she'im yivarech yoter she'nireh kemosif. That's what they say, right? That uh, you may look like you're adding because you're making more blessings. In other words, they already make four blessings. They make a blessing on each cup. So then you may think you have to also add more blessings for, for the extra cups, right? So that's why he says, make sure you have intention to drink more. This way, you won't have to make a blessing on each cup. So that's the story. Okay. But he says, going to the Rosh, you don't need to make on every cup, right? Uh, on each cup, a blessing. So then there's no differentiation, right? There's no between if he's going to bless or not. Uh, because if we think that he's adding, you know, extra blessings, I feel below Beracha Nami. That would also apply even without a blessing. Uh, so then he goes on the tour here. But uh, before we go on, let's just see uh, this bit Yosef here, if there is. It seems like we have to go on in the uh, tour a little bit more. So it says here in the tour, "Umevi'in lefanav kiara shebo gimel matzot." So right, we bring um, the uh, a plate, right, or a, what do you call it? A uh, what do they call those things? A tray, right? A tray. You bring a tray, uh, and the, it should have three matzot on it. So this is the custom, you know, that uh, when we do the Lela Seder, you know, the Seder night, we put three matzot uh, uh, on, the, on the table as when we read the Haggadah. That's what he's telling you. So, in other words, you have uh, you have a tray, okay? So the tray includes uh, three matzot uh, and maror, right? Um, so, you know, just to fill you in, right, on this, make sure you don't make a mistake. 
what are we talking about? We're talking about matzah shmura, right? The garden matzah. So don't bring your, you know, garden variety, you know, box matzah for this purpose, right? You got to make sure you have shmura matzah, at least three of them for this purpose. So three matzot, which are shmura, and the maror, right? So what's the maror? As we said, the best thing to use for maror is romaine lettuce. So try to get romaine lettuce, right? Make sure you buy everything early because otherwise, you know, you can run out of all this stuff. And then you got nothing left in the store. Right? Uh, this is the problem. So make sure you go you go shopping early. Don't wait till the last minute, right? So, yeah, you got to have the maror. And, right, also the tray should have haroset, right? So haroset, what is what is that? Right, uh, we're talking about uh, it's like a big, basically a mixture of different types of fruits and nuts, uh, and you grind it up, and you put some right um, honey in there and all kinds of stuff, and right? spices and God knows what, right, whatever, all kinds of goodies. So it's like you know, it has a texture of mud, like you know, teat. It's a, it has a muddy texture to it. That's the way it's. That's the way it's done. Uh, so. So you have to have, at least, as we said, right, on that tray, you got to have your matzot, maror, romaine lettuce, and then haroset, which is, right, as we said, that muddy stuff, right, veshar uh, yerakot, and also other types of vegetables. So what do we use for types of vegetables? Uh, the, the best thing to use for karpas, right, is uh, celery, right, uh, even though some of the Ashkenazim, they like to use like carrots and potato and stuff like this. They probably started using that in Europe because they didn't have celery, you know? But celery is the real kapas. So if you can get your hands on celery, which there should be no problem, right? Uh, you know, make sure you get celery. So this is the stuff you need, right, for Passover, right? Your your basic, right, uh, setter ingredients, right? Uh, three matzot, shmura. Romaine lettuce, maror, right? Haroset, as we said. And then, right, you've got to have your karpas, which is celery. Better to use stalks than to use leaves, you know, for celery. The stalks are better. Uh, because they're usually more clean, you know? Uh, they usually don't have bugs and stuff, so it's easier to work with that. Um, okay. Uh, so then he says... Uh, Right, uh, and also, right, another thing you have to have there is uh, two cooked dishes. So two cooked things. So you know the custom is like this, right? That for the two cooked dishes, usually we have like one egg, boiled egg, you know, and then we have some, like a shank bone, right? Which is uh, could be, you know, you, like the best thing is lamb, you know, but you could, could also put chicken there. Roasted roasted meat, right? Uh, you know, roasted lamb or roasted uh, roasted chicken, something like that. So those are the two uh, the two cooked dishes you're gonna have, right? Some people use other things as well, you know, but it's all the same. You know, took basically you need two two cooked dishes, right? Uh, so this is what you're gonna have on your seder plate, right? On your seder at right, um, tray. And um, so now he explains to you, right, what they all signify. Um, so maror, right? Uh, what is that? What is that? What does that signify? Zechel by maru et This reminds us of how they embittered our lives, the Egyptians, right? Uh, you know, with all the hard labor that they put on us and all that stuff, right? The suffering, right? Uh, all kinds of things. So it was a it was a it was it was a difficult uh, situation there. That comes to remind us of that. Right. So he says, which um, which vegetables can you use for maror? Uh, what uh, what options do you have? So as we said, right, uh, the best one is chazeret, right, which is what romaine lettuce. Right? Uh, and then you have olshin. So olshin is like endives. 
you know, they're, they're kind of like they're kind of bitter. They're even more bitter than romaine lettuce, right? Uh, and then you have tamcha, right? So what is tamcha? That's the uh, horseradish, right? That the Ashkenazim they use a lot of the Ashkenazim, they use that. Uh, right? So these are all kinds of you know vegetables um, that they use, but. It says in the Talmud, right, that uh, better to use, the best thing to use is romaine lettuce. Why is it better than all the others? Uh, because it signifies the Egyptian exile, because the, the leaf of the romaine lettuce is like, on top it's sweeter, and on the bottom it gets more bitter. And that's how it was, the, the uh, exile there, you know? It started sweet, but as time went along, got very bitter, you know? So the romaine lettuce signifies the nature of the Egyptian exile. That's the whole story there. So the truth is, you know, it's readily, it's readily available everywhere, you know, romaine lettuce nowadays, Baruch Hashem. Uh, so you should have no problem, you know, with that. Uh, uh, but, you know, they do have, in the Jewish stores, you know, uh, they have... Greenhouse grown, you know, so which you know doesn't have so many bugs. It's more clean, you know, so there's no infestation. So it's better to buy that if you can if you can find that in your local grocery, right? Jewish grocery. If you can find that greenhouse grown romaine lettuce, that's uh, very good, right? Uh, good, good, good thing. This way, you won't have you won't have to check it so much, you know, and uh, go through all the suffering of right, having to prepare it. Getting it ready for for prep, uh, for to make it edible. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what you need. So so it says the tour builds in the alin shalahem with kalachin. It says you can. So when it comes to these vegetables that we just mentioned, you can use the leaves or the stalks. Right, they're all they're both good. They work. They they both work well. No problem, you know. Uh, it's just that the stalks are easier to work with because, uh, you know, they're they're you know less less infestation and uh, easier to check them, you know, and wash them and whatever. Uh, so you know, the stalks can be sometimes more convenient. That's the whole thing. Okay, good. Uh, so let's see, but Yosef, right? We have a lot of information. All right. So says but Yosef here, right? Where's the source for all this stuff? Right, your Seder tray, right? Your Seder plate. So he says, this is according to Tosfot, right? Um, that, you know, you have three matzot, Ah, so the rift holds, it's enough to have two matzot, right? You don't need three. That's also what the Rambam says. So he says, right, but yourself, the custom is like the Russian Tosfot. So meaning what? That, you know, everybody everybody puts three, three matzot. So, you know, you got to make sure you have enough, right? Matzah uh, uh, for everybody, you know, to, first of all, you should have enough for the table for three, and also enough for everybody to eat, all your guests, whatever, and all that stuff. Make sure everybody's got their little portion there. Right? And uh, so this way, there won't be any issues, you know, there's not enough to eat, there's not enough this, not enough that. Make sure you're you're well supplied. Okay, good. So, yeah, let's see the... Um, so it says the Shukhanuch. Mevin Lifne Balabait Kiara Sheyesh Ba Shrosha Matzot. As we said, right? They bring the setter uh, right uh, tray or the setter plate, whatever you want to call it, right? And what's on that plate? What's on that tray? Uh three matzot, right? Uh Shmura, as we said. Maror, right? Romaine lettuce, right? The best one. Haroset, right? The muddy stuff. 
uh karpas right karpas is uh the vegetable right what which which is the which is that uh celery so if you can find celery right don't bring uh potatoes and uh carrots uh, it's not really the real that's not the real stuff right so make sure make sure you get the better stuff if you can if it's available there should be no problem with that right uh, where are you gonna go in america that doesn't have uh celery or romaine lettuce, right? It's everywhere. You can get find it anywhere. But if you go to the Jewish store, as we said, right, it'll be better because you'll get the greenhouse stuff. You know, it's more more uh, less infested with bugs and you know, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that's the story there. So oh, uh, yerekah right? Or as you said, right, that if you don't, if you can't find kapas, which is celery, then bring a different vegetable, right? As we said, you know, bring whatever, right? Um, like the Ashkenazim, they use potatoes, carrots, you know, whatever, all that stuff. The chometz or memelach, right? Also, another thing you got to bring is that uh, you got to have something to dip your right celery in there. Uh, so what do we use for that? Either vinegar or salt water, right? One or the other. Take your pick. Whatever makes you happy. Right, uh, and two cooked dishes, as we said, right? Uh, so, what are these coming to signify? These two cooked dishes. One is a remembrance for the korban pesach, and one is a re resemblance for a resem uh, um, uh, One is a remembrance for the chagiga uh, sacrifice. So these are, these are two sacrifices they used to, used to bring in the, to the temple on the first day of Passover. Uh, so that's what we have there. As a, as a remembrance. Right? So as we said, right, the custom, he says, is to use meat, right? Uh, one cooked dish is meat, and one is an egg, right? So that's the custom, you know? Nothing wrong with it. Good, good, good idea. Okay, good. So uh says the Ramah here. Uh, so the Ramah says something interesting, right? Arrange the tray in a way that you don't have to pass over the mitzvot. What does that mean? You shouldn't have to pass over one to do the other, you know, because that's like you're skipping over. A mitzvah, it's disrespect. So therefore, do it in a way where the earlier mitzvot are going to be closer to you. This way you won't have to pass over your hand on the other mitzvot before the time has come to do it. So he says, therefore, what should be first, right, on your on your list? First, you should have the uh, karpas, right, which is the celery, because that's what we bless on first. We wash our hands and we eat karpas, celery. Um, that should be the first thing on your on your right itinerary there. Uh, so good. Um, so he says also right the, the vinegar should be also there. Why? Because you dip the karpas into the vinegar when you eat it, so it should be right there as well. Uh, so then he goes on. So that should be closer than a matzah, he says, right? Why? Because a matzah, you're going to eat that later on, right? Because you're not eating it now, in the beginning. Uh, so therefore, it shouldn't be uh, the first thing you, right, you pass over there. The matzot, mina maror becharoset. And the matzot should be closer than the maror and the charoset, which comes later. So it's all chronological order here, right? That's what we're saying. So he says they should be closer than the uh, meat and the, and the egg. Right? So the truth is, you know, that if you look in the Haggadah, if you have a nice Haggadah, you're gonna, it's going to show you in the beginning, right, the, the order of how you arrange all these types of foods, right, uh, on, the, on the plate, on the, on the tray. Uh, so the truth is there's two different customs, right? One is the Ashkenazi custom, uh, which is like according to you know the simple meaning right the pshat, but the the um, the Sfaradin, they do like the the kabbalah you know the arizal you know so the arizal has a different order a little bit 
So that's how we do, you know, we do like the Arizal. Uh, so everybody does according to their custom, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, if you have a nice Haggadah, you know, with your with your custom, as we said, right, make sure you have a Haggadah, which is your custom and not some other custom, because otherwise you're going to have to make doing, doing their own customs. Make sure you're on the you're on the right page, as they say, right? Make sure you're on the right Haggadah. So he says, right, that regarding the meat, the custom is to have like uh, you know, uh, right, zaroa, you know, which is the arm, right, of the animal, right, whatever the, the yeah, the, the, right, uh, and uh, so you know, if you have like a what do you call it, if you if you're having a chicken. So you're gonna bring, you know, the uh, right, uh, the the leg and thigh, right, or or the leg, whatever, right. That's you know, that's what you need. Uh, if you if you're bringing chicken, and if you're bringing lamb, right, also same thing, right, like say leg of lamb, whatever, something like that, you know, some some kind of a leg piece. Whatever. It's all good. Um, but you know, this is just the custom. I mean, you know, if you don't have a leg, you can bring also other type as well. Whatever you got, you know, but the, the leg is the custom, whatever. That's what he says. And also it should be roasted, right? Uh, so what does that mean? It shouldn't be boiled, right? Or not fried. It should be roasted, right? What does that mean, roasted? On a fire, you know, or, or on a barbecue, whatever, right? One or the other, right? Uh, the gas or the barbecue, whatever. Any, any, Anything like that. Um, okay, good. So... So he said, right, it should be, the custom is that it's on the coals, right? So it's barbecue, like, you know, interesting. Wow. Okay, there you go. On the coals. Uh, why is it, by the way, that they do it like that? Because that's the way they, they, they did it, uh, you know, during the temple era, you know, uh, they, did it, they did it on the coals. So try to emulate that that whole, you know, that whole uh, system there. But it says the egg is going to be boiled, right? So the 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 meat is roasted, right, and the uh, egg is boiled. right? So it says Rama, right? You can also use a roasted egg, you know, whatever. It's all the same, you know. He says the custom by us is like to use roasted eggs. It's all good, you know, whatever, right? One or the other, no problem. Either either way is fine. So yeah, that's the story there. Good. So let's see what else we got here. Right, so it says Shukhan Ruch, uh, and hey, Elu Yerakot Shiyotzin Ben Yedecho Bato, right? So these are the vegetables you can use for, right, or uh, maror, right, for the maror. Uh, which vegetables can you use? As we said, right, the number one choice is romaine lettuce. And then after that, endives, right? Uh, and then, as we said, right, horseradish is not the best pick, uh, right, uh, all these things. So, you know, uh, there's all kinds of types of, right, uh, the other ones, I'm not really sure what they are, uh, but they're bitter, right? The least bitter one is is the romaine lettuce, and that's the best one. So it's not, you know, we don't go by the bitterness, you know, like the more the, the more bitter, the better, the merrier, right? We, we don't say that. The best one is is romaine lettuce, even though it's not the most bitter one. So yeah, that's the story there. Uh, right? But it says, uh, ah, so he says, you can use the leaves or you, or you can use the stalks, right, of these vegetables. But not the roots, right? Don't use the roots, he says. Uh, by the way, that, that's one reason why, you know, some people say it's not to, good to use the raw horseradish, you know, for maror, because the, the horseradish is the root, right? And uh, according to Shulchan Ruch, that's not good. Okay, whatever. Anyway, but the Ashkenazim used to use it in Europe because, you know, I guess they didn't have romaine lettuce there. You know, it wasn't available. Uh, nowadays, everything is available. But in those days, you know, 
things were very scanty in those days. Uh, the availability was very poor. So they did the best they could. Good. Uh, so he says, right, that when it comes to leaves, though, right, if you want to use the leaves, you can only use it if they're moist, right? Not if they're dried. Because once they get dried out, the leaves, you know, they lose their taste and texture. It's not the same thing anymore, you know? So therefore, you know, it's not, you can't really use that. When it comes to stalks, though, right, you can use it whether it's dry or moist. Aval, uh, I'm sorry, one more time. Yeah. Um, aval, lo kibushim. But don't use, what you don't want to use is pickled, you know, like pickled stuff. So don't bring pickled vegetables, you know, to use for tomorrow. That's not proper. Why is that, by the way? Because when they get pickled, the taste changes altogether. You know, it's a different taste altogether. So it's not the original taste, and that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for sour, right? We're looking for bitter. So, <laughs> right, uh, one doesn't resemble the other. It's not the same thing. This is also don't use right uh, cooked, you know, boiled vegetables for that for that purpose from maror, because also you know it, it loses its flavor once you boil it, so it's not the same thing anymore, you know. Uh, so he says all these types of maror they combine to have one kazait because you're supposed to have one kazait of maror, right? How much is that? Half an egg, right, in volume, which is about 27 grams in weight. Uh, so he says, right, what's the best maror? Romaine lettuce, right, as we said, right? That's the number one. Number one choice. So if you don't have if you don't have romaine lettuce, then you use the other ones, right? In other words, each one downgrades a little bit more. So there's a priority, you know, the, the second number two, number three, number four, right? Uh, you, you go down the list. That's the way it is, in terms of priority. So the the first ones on the list are the earlier ones are better than the final ones. That's the, that's the idea. Okay, good. Um, good. Uh, says the Ramah here, Ve'im en lo echad mi'ed wa ilakot, ikach la'ana o shal yerek mar. So says the Ramah something interesting, right? What about if you don't have any of these vegetables, right? What do you do? You know, for maror. So he says, just use some kind of a bitter, you know, vegetable, right? Some kind of bitter leaf. Bitter leaves, you know? Be creative, you know? Pick something out. Right? So that's what we do, you know? Probably you shouldn't bless on it, though, because, you know, it's not really the proper maror. So it's like a substitute, basically, you know? So you really shouldn't bless on that. What's a blessing that we make on maror? Allah hilat maror, right? So we don't bless on that. If Only on the five types that we mentioned, right? Well, the five species. That, but all the other ones, even though they're bitter, it's not really maror. So we don't uh, we don't bless on that. Right, so he says the Mama, how do you make the haroset? He says make it thick, you know, like mud, like mud, you know, like nice and thick. You know, don't make it like watery, you know. It's not like it shouldn't be like a liquid. You know, it should be thick, right, like mud. Uh, so he says then we put a little bit. Um, so why do we eat haroset? Zechel right? So it says it's the it's a remembrance for the mud, right? That they were working, right, uh, in in the mud, you know, in, in the, the Jews over there when they were enslaved, right? making uh, you know making bricks out of mud, out of clay, right? All kinds of stuff. Uh, so then he says, then we put some vinegar in there. He says, or some wine, adom, some red wine. 
Zecher Adam, that's a resemblance, that's a remembrance for the blood. Interesting. Right. So the Osin, right. So in other words, the Haroset should have a um a, a red color, right? Reddish color. That's what he's saying. So it should look like blood a little bit, you know, bloody. Bloody Haroset. Okay, whatever, right? So the Osin the Haroset miperot shenim shelu b'hem Israel. So he says, what should you make the haroset with? You know, what kind of fruits should you use? Fruits that are compared to the Jewish people, right? They're, <laughs> right? Kegon, uh, tapuchim, for instance, apples, right? Tenim, right, which is figs, egozim, and nuts, right? Uh, limonim, right, hazelnuts, right? And then we have the pomegranate, shkedim, right? The almonds, venotim, I love, tavlina. We put some spices there, right? Uh, Ashkenazim, they like to put cinnamon there, you know, cinnamon on the on the, the, the Sfarim, they put other stuff, all kinds of other stuff. But it's all good. Different, different recipes, you know. The Sfardi one is usually like more, you know, more a little bit on the more pungent side, you know. And the Ashkenazi one is very sweet. Like, you know, so you know. Kigon, kinamon, vezangri. So it says, right, use like, you know, as you said, right? You can use um cinnamon or right or ginger. Right, hadomim uh, leteven, because they look like uh, hay, right? Which the Jews were the Jews were using to make bricks, you know, out of uh, right. Shayu megablin uh, because they used to, you know, take the take the uh, hay, right, and uh, straw, right. You take the straw, and uh, you know they they used to put put it mix it with water and make bricks out of it, right. That, that's the way they made the bricks. So it's all remembrance for all that stuff they used to do there. Uh, the, you know the haroset and all these uh, vegetables, right? All these foods are uh, a, a remembrance like that. Okay, very good. I guess we'll stop here. Very nice, Baruch Hashem. We did. We got a lot done. So, Baruch Hashem, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. We'll see you tomorrow. Laila Tov, Chazak Baruch. Thank you so much. All the best. Laila Tov. You too. Bye bye.